evening, Maikoni, West Coast, Barbies, New Amsterdam, and of course, right here on the Quarantine Coast. Welcome once again to another program of issues in the news, where I discuss the important issues that would have taken place over the last few days in our country. And as I normally say, Guyana is a very dynamic society, a very dynamic country and a lot of things happen in a very short period of time so at any given time there is a lot a lot of issues important national issues to discuss and tonight I want to focus primarily on a particular issue which I began to speak about two weeks ago two programs ago I said to you to be careful, to be wary, and to be vigilant that the writing is on the wall, that there is every indication that this government will want to rig the next elections. Remember I said so? I said so because of the racism the discrimination, the paying of themselves 50% increase in salaries when every other sector employee is paid 5%, when the sugar worker is paid none. I said so because they have no, they have no they have no uh, justification and they do not attempt a justification for the actions which they commit upon the Guyanese people. I said so because this is a government that has imposed over 200 tax measures in one calendar year. And I said in the parliament a few nights ago that there is no other country in the world that has imposed more taxes on its people in a given calendar year than this government. I said so because of the rampant corruption that is taking place. I said so because the, of the arrogance which exudes from ministers where ministers tell, say to the public we don't have to apologize for raising our salaries by 50% I said so because taxes and public fees are being raised by 50,000% but the salaries of the people are raised by 5%. And you know what will happen when you have that kind of disparity between expenditure and income occurring. So this is not a government that is in the business of winning popular support. In fact, this government is clearly demonstrating that it intends not to win public support, that it cares not to win public support, and that is why, and that can only be the reason why it behaves in the way it does. A government that is 19 months in office in any part of the world does not behave the way that this government behaves, does not pursue the policies that this government pursues. We have a declining economy, a contracting economy, declining commerce, declining production in every sector, 
rising in inflation and this government chooses to impose over 200 tax measures on a people whose salaries are not increasing in any commensurate manner. They are not creating any new jobs. They cannot be increased. There is no increase in production. There is no new investments. And in such a dismal economic climate, this government continues to impose upon the backs of its people and its supporters more and more taxes. The rice farmers in Region 5 are still underwater, still underwater. This is a government that foolishly promised to end flooding. The president himself came to the parliament and as if he is God said that he will end flooding in Guyana. When these people speak you want to know if something is wrong with them. Today the rice farmers can't find the market for their paddy. The price which the government promised them they cannot get, the government cannot assist them with the securing of international market. And the government refuses any, to offer any assistance to the rice farmers. Instead, the government drives the rice farmers deeper into the hole by removing VAT from heavy duty equipment, VAT exemption from heavy duty equipment. And the government is raising the drainage and irrigation charges at MME by a few hundred percent. 300%. If you used to pay $2,000 per year, per acre, you now have to pay $6,000 per year, per acre. That is what the government is doing. So when you examine all these inexplicable happenings, when you examine all these unpopular policies that are being imposed on the backs of the Guyanese people. When you examine that people's rights are being taken away by the government, their leases are being revoked, the government doesn't respect the laws of the land, like how what they did to the Red House, terminate a lease and give a person's 48-hour notice and determining by themselves without going to court that the lease is invalid, therefore throwing out the court system to the window and violating the rule of law. A government that behaves like that can't be a government that expects to win the elections fairly and based upon the democratic process. Because a government would want to behave good, would want to deliver goods and services to the people, would want to keep taxation low, would want to help to create jobs, would want to help industries that employ thousands of people to stay alive and keep on producing. That is what a, a government that depends upon the people's votes to remain in office would normally do, but not this government. This government 
is doing the opposite. And I have, over the last 19 months, in my articles, which I am asking you to read, the unruly horse in the mirror, in the Stablook News, it is published as a letter every week, and in the Kaicho News, it is also published as a letter. On my Facebook page, it is unruly horse. Read those articles, and you will see that for the past 19 months, every week, I have been revealing and exposing one authoritarian act after another as I continue to build a case with clarity to demonstrate and illustrate to you, the people of Barbies, and indeed all Guyana that we are sliding into a dictatorship and we are doing so at a fast rate. And therefore, it is the responsibility of all of us, and I say this, all of us, because I want to appeal to supporters of the government, persons who would have voted for the APNU AFC, to come to your senses and look at what is going on. You are not benefiting from the hundreds of millions of dollars that are being spent. You are worse off than you were. 99% of you are worse off than you were three or two years ago. Examine your lives. Examine the state of your economy. Examine the state of your village. Examine the state of where you live. Examine your existence and your welfare. And you will see that you are in a worse position. Not more than four or five thousand people are benefiting from this government. Not more than that. Not more than four or five thousand are benefiting from this government. This government does not come out of Georgetown. It's an urban elitist government. It does not understand the life and the struggle of the working people in the rural areas of this country. It does not. They don't understand it. And that is why you will rarely see a minister in Burmese. And each and every one of you can compare for yourself the number of times you would have seen PPP ministers in Burmese per week and the number of times you are seeing APNU, AFC ministers per month in Burmese. Per month in Burmese. And you will see that you are seeing more, you will conclude, rather, that you would have seen more PPP ministers in Burmese in one week than you would see AP and UAFC ministers in two, three months in Burmese. That is a reality. I am not asking you. I am telling you. Because I know these people. I know how they think, I know their mentality, I know how they process information, I know the life that they live. You are a burden to them. Them coming to Barbies is a burden. They prefer to leave Guyana and go overseas rather than come to Barbies. And that is why every week, two, three, four, five of them are out of the country spending your money while neglecting you. I say I paint that picture because I want to put what I have to say for the rest of the program in that setting against that backdrop so you understand from where I am coming. 
I said all of that to establish to you that this is not a government that intends to win election based upon your votes and your support. They are not coming to you. They have finished with you. They needed your vote to get into government. And now that they have gotten into government, they would like, they plan to stay into government without your support as they did for 28 years before and that is by rigging of the elections now i don't say this to mean that they will succeed they will only succeed in rigging the elections if you and i allow them to do so because this is not 28 years ago we are living in a different age. There is no Cold War here. There is no Marxism-Leninism threat here anymore. We have social media. News travels quickly. So we have to begin to work now. We have to begin this national conversation of the intention of this government to rig the next elections. We have to start to talk about it now and take actions now to let them know that it will not happen. It will not happen. We will not allow that to happen ever in this country again. And that has nothing to do with party politics. That has to do with the welfare of our country and the future of our country. Because dictatorship brings economic hardship, social hardship, starvation, and bankruptcy. That is what dictatorship brings. And we have lived that life, we have passed through that, and we are not going back to that again. And we have to say that very loudly and very clearly to those who are in office. Because there is every likelihood that they will rig the next elections. And we have to begin to prepare now to fight and struggle hard against that eventuality. This week, we saw the clearest signal of that intention to rig about which I speak. You know, and I know, and we want young people to know, that before 1992, the president alone appointed the chairman of the Elections Commission. It used to be a part-time job, and the president did not have to consult with anyone to make that appointment. And Forbes Burnham appointed a man named Donald Jackson and then appointed Harold Bollards. Those were the two chairmen of the Elections Commission in that period, in the, sixth, in the 70s and 80s. And they were both appointed by the President or Prime Minister of the day without consultation. And at that time, the qualifications to be appointed to that position was a judge, a former judge, or a person qualified to be a judge. That was the qualification then. And we know that under Donald Jackson's stewardship and under Harold Ballard's stewardship, every single election was rigged. We know that. That's our history. Even the PNC now would accept that. They rigged the elections. Then we came up to 1992. And Dr. Cherry Jagan traveled the whole world 
harnessing support for free and fair elections. We struggled internally while a lot of our comrades traveled the world and used all kinds of methods and strategies in North America, in Toronto, in Ottawa, in Scarborough, in New York, in Maryland, in Florida, in London, and amassed great support and brought Guyana's political issues about the failure to hold free and fair elections to the international stage. And it is in that context that President Jimmy Carter and the Carter Center came to Guyana in 1990, 1991. And a number of reforms were to take place, which President Hoyt then agreed to. A major, some major ones were one, a reform of the Elections Commission, and two, counting at the place of poll and so on. But we are concerned here with the reform of the Elections Commission. And President Carter came up with a formula as to how this GCOM will be com constituted. He said that it will consist of three nominees from the opposition and three from the government of the day and that is why that put that, that is how you have three commissioners and three commissioners three from the opposition and three from the government so that's a commission and president carter said that the chairman must also be elected or appointed in a manner which involves some type of consensus between the opposition and the president. And that is how he came up with the formula that the opposition leader must comprise, must compose a list of six persons and that list must be submitted to the president and find, find the acceptance of the president. And that is how the Carter formula came about. For the 92 elections, they dispense with the judge's requirement. As I said before, you used to have to be a judge or a person qualified to be a judge or a former judge. President Carter said, no, we don't want that. We want to broaden and we want more people of different qualifications. And for the 1992 elections, Cherry Jagan submitted the following name. Rudy Collins, a career diplomat. Edward Hopkinson, sorry, for that, for the 2000, 1996, sorry, I, I got it mixed up. So President Jagan submitted six names, not President Jagan, leader of the opposition Jagan submitted six names to Desmond Hoy, President from which President Hoyt chose Rudy Collins, a career diplomat. And then the formula was used again in 94, 1994 local government elections, where six names now had to have been submitted by Desmond Hoyt as opposition leader to President Jenny Jagger. From that list, President, President Jagan chose Edward Hopkinson. And then in 1990, as we were approaching the 97 elections, they decided to put this formula in the Constitution. And this was done in 1995. This very formula that Carter made, where the chairman comes from a list of six names to be submitted by the leader of the opposition to the president, but which the president must find acceptable. 
They used that in 1992, they used it in 94, and now we are coming to the 97 elections. And they put that in the Constitution. However, they amend in the Constitution, the Constitution contemplated and provides for two categories of persons. One, they said that the persons on the list of candidates must be a judge, a former judge, or a, retire, or a person qualified to be a judge. So that's one category of persons or any other fit and proper person. Any other fit and proper person. That's what the Constitution says. So two categories. You have a category with legal qualifications, that is a judge, a former judge, or a person qualified to be a judge. That's the one category. And then the other category, or any other fit and proper person or any other fit and proper person. The or in the constitution there is disjunctive. Disjunctive. What that means, you can either choose this, a person from this qualification, or a person from the other qualification. And under the formula put in the constitution in 1995, do not say, was selected from a list which Hoyt submitted to Dr. Jagger. Do not sing. Now, do not sing had legal qualifications. Then that formula in the Constitution survived the Constitution reform process of 1990, 1999 to 2000. Recall that in 1999 to 2000, we had widespread constitutional reform. That aspect of the constitution was untouched. And this reform took place by all the political parties. Together, they formed this commission. And they brought into the commission farmers representative, private sector representative, bar association representative, labor movement representative, religious organization, representative, human rights representative, a whole host of people, huge commission. And of course, all the political parties being there, Derek Murray, De De um, um, Derek Bernard, Winston Murray, uh, Alexander, Haslin Paris, all these people, Rupert Rupnerine, they were all there. Nagamutu was there, Frank Anthony was there, and a whole host of people on both sides of the political divide. But none of them touched this provision in the Constitution. They kept it. And for the 2001 elections now, after Dud Nath Singh finished the 97 election, he resigned. Then for the 2001 election, Mr. Hoyt submitted six names to President Jack Dave. And those six names were Dennis Craig, Jem Fletcher, David Granger, David Granger, Justice Rudolph Harper, Joseph Singh, and Charles Liburn. And from that six, President Jack Dave chose Joe Singh. And then again, after the 2001 elections, Joe Singh resigned and Hoyt submitted another six names to Jack Dave, from which Jack Dave chose Suraj Bhatt. Following the same constitutional requirements. And what the constitutional requirements say? That the persons on the list must either be a judge, a former judge, or a person qualified to be a judge, or any fit and proper person. Over the years, the fit and proper formula 
qualified most of the people who sat as elections commission chairman. Most of the people. In fact, only do not sing had legal qualifications. You had Rudy Collins in 92. He was a career diplomat. You had Edward Hopkinson for the local government elections. He was a geologist. You had Joseph Singh. He was a retired army general. That's for the 2001 elections. Then you had Dr. Steve Surajbali for the 2006 elections and 2011 elections. 2006, 2011, 2015. Surajbali did three elections. Surajbali is a veterinary doctor. None of these people, other than Dudnat Singh, has legal qualifications. All of them were qualified under that part of the Constitution that says that a person can be a fit and proper person. President Granger, as you are aware, rejected a list that came from Mr. Jack Dale. And you know the names of the persons on that list. And the reason that he gave, the reason that he gave is that the persons who are on Jack Dale's list did not have the qualifications to be a judge. The man has completely ignored the other category of persons who are qualified to be on that list. And that is any other person. Joe Singh is not a judge. Rudy Collins is not a judge. Suraj Bali is not a judge. David Granger himself is not a judge. He has no legal qualifications, yet his name was put on the list. Is the president now saying that Mr. Hoyt violated the Constitution all the years when he submitted these names who are not judges and who are not former judges and who are not qualified to be judges? Is the president saying that he himself lent his name to a process which violated the Constitution when he had accepted for his name to be put on the list in the, for the 2001 elections? The president doesn't have legal qualifications, yet Mr. Desmond Hoyt put his name on the list. Mr. Desmond Hoyt is a senior counsel for whom I have the highest regard. He distinguished himself at the bar. He's a lawyer. Mr. Granger is a soldier. Yet, he is interpreting the Constitution like no one else in the country. No one else. And he is insisting that the persons must have legal qualifications. Must either be a judge or a former judge or qualified to be a judge. When the Constitution says, yes, that is one set of requirements, or any other fit and proper person. Or any other fit and proper person. I will read the Constitution. Article 162, 161, 2 of the Constitution says, Subject to the provisions of paragraph 4, which are not relevant, the chairman of the Elections Commission shall be a person who holds or who has held office as a judge of a court having unlimited jurisdiction in civil and criminal matters in some part of the Commonwealth, or a court having jurisdiction in appeals from any such court, or who is qualified to be appointed as any such judge, or any fit and proper person, to be appointed by the president from a list of persons not acceptable to the president submitted by the leader of the opposition. So, Jack Deaver submitted six lists, six names. All of them don't have to be judges. 
because there's another category of qualifications or any fit and proper person is it that the president do, does not understand what or means is it that the president does not understand what the word or means or any fit and proper person I can't believe that I can't believe that so President Granger has gone down in history as the first president to ever reject a list of names coming from the opposition leader for the appointment of chairman of GCOM and that is not without significance I believe and many people believe that this is the beginning of a process to rig the elections. The president has requested another list. The president has requested another list to be submitted to him. He will, I believe, that he will reject that one too. And then will argue that because proper lists are not being submitted to him he will appoint a person of his own choice he will appoint a person of his own choice I think that is his agenda and when he does that well of course he will put somebody there who will manipulate and interfere with the process of course when he puts somebody there all of us will lose confidence in the electoral machine because that person is obviously being put there to rig the elections. But significantly, significantly, there is a particular balance that GCOM must have. You have six commissioners from the PNC, from the government, sorry, three commissioners from the government and three from the opposition. So you have that balance already. The chairman comes there. He's supposed to be impartial because he comes from a list that the opposition leader gave to the president. So he's a consensual candidate. The president and the opposition leader would have agreed. The opposition leader would have agreed for his name to be put on the list. And the president would have agreed by appointing him. And he has a casting vote. And that is supposed to bring balance to the GCOM. Now when the president appoints his own person, then the vote will capsize. The vote will capsize. Because there is no balance anymore. The government will have four persons there. And it will become like the parliament. Where although they have 33 seats, they have the speaker with them, so that's 34. They want the same thing at GCOM. They have three persons there by, the, by virtue of the constitution. They want the fourth person that they want to appoint when the law does not permit them and the constitution does not permit that to happen. Once that happens, then obviously it will be the foundation for them to rig the elections. And we have to stop it now. We have to stop it now. Now, all of us, if we have to come out on the road and march, we have a series of activities that we are planning. A series of activities that we are planning. We are calling upon all civil-minded and civic-minded Guyanese, every one of, of you, to come out and condemn this act. Write it in newspapers. Go on the Facebook page and comment. Go on Instagram and make your point. Call into television programs. Write letters in the newspapers. Talk about it wherever you go. This onslaught on our democracy must stop. Unless the president is stopped now, then we will be in serious trouble. In serious trouble. 
So we are calling on all the organizations in this country, all the women organization, the Bar Association, the Women Lawyers Association, Red Trend, the Human Rights Organization, the Private Sector Commission, the Labor Movement, the religious organizations, come out and lend your voice. Come out and condemn this attack and onslaught on our democracy. This is what, this is what will determine the future of our country. If we allow the president to get away with this. President Jagdeo wrote him this afternoon. Uh, leader of the opposition, Jagdeo, wrote to the president this afternoon. And said to him, look, your interpretation and mine of Article 161.2 of the Constitution is quite different. Please tell me what is yours. Because yours only seem to think. Your interpretation is that only judges former judges or those who are qualified to be judges can be a member of the commission. If that is so, then you are wrong. That is President Jack Lee, former President Jack Lee telling me just after the letter that was sent out to me. And the letter further asks that the president meet, first of all, that he clarifies what he understands 161 to be. What does he understand or any other person to me. We want to know whether he thinks that he, he is a judge or qualified to be a judge or whether Joe Singh was a judge or whether Rudy Collins was a judge or Edward Hopkinson or Steve Surridge Bali. And why is it that he is interpreting the constitution in such a twisted and perverse, perverse manner? I can't believe that the president can't read in simple language. I can't believe that the president doesn't understand what or means. Because if I am to believe that, then I also have to accept that he is unqualified to run the country. That he is incapable to run the country, to perform the office of the functions of the presidency. Clearly, if he can't, if he doesn't understand what or means, then he can't be president. He suffers from some kind of incapacity. So it cannot be that. It has to be that the president is deliberately engaging in trickery. He's deliberately maneuvering so that eventually he will get to appoint his own person. Well, that will not happen because that is unconstitutional. That is unlawful. So we are seeing the clearest, the clearest sign so far of this government signaling an intention to rig the elections. And we have to stand up and fight against it. We have to stand up and fight against it. We will organize, first of all, a series of things will be done. Today, we have issued a detailed press statement, I have it here, one page, two page, three pages, and it's very factual, very technical with all the legal arguments and everything in it. So if you get a copy of this, you should understand the issues absolutely. So this statement will go out, and it will not go out to the media houses in Guyana. This is going international. This is going to the diplomatic community. It is going to the ABC countries. It is going to the diaspora. It is going all over the world. So that statement will go. Then we are organizing public outreaches right across the country. Right across the country. In Barbies, in Demerara, and in Esquimu where we will also hold a public forum, a public forum to which all will be invited and we will have different persons speaking on what the constitution means and what is the effect of the president's misinterpretation of the constitution, what will flow from that. So you will hear that very early next week 
you will hear our plans to do that. And then of course we, are, we will meet with the diplomatic community and explain to them this whole issue. And then of course we are working on our Facebook pages, we are working on the radio, we are working on the television, and we are working on various fronts to highlight this matter. I want to take this opportunity to call the Barbies Bar to speak out. Your lawyers, the Constitution is yours. You have to help the unlearned in the law. You have to help them to understand the Constitution. And that is why you have to write about it in the newspapers and elsewhere, explaining what that article means. So, unless we are vigilant, unless we are careful, the elections can be rigged under our very noses. But we will not allow that to happen. And that is why the momentum must begin now. The struggle must begin now to reject the president's interpretation of the constitution which is grossly inaccurate grossly inaccurate a six-year-old child knows what or means this president is making himself a laughing stock not only of Guyana but the entire world an entire world because he's essentially telling the world and showing the world that he does not understand what the word or means. And I don't want him to humiliate himself like that. He is still the president of the country in which I live. And therefore I want people to have healthy respect for my president. Both nationally and internationally. But I can't have the president not being able to interpret or properly and not seeming to understand what or means cannot be we can't have a president like that and that is why we are exploring all these options I know that you want to ask me whether we will be going to court or not when everything else breaks down of course the court is there but it is there for last resort because we, we fear that once we put this out there we put it back in the court. Then the president will say, well, you know, I can't act anymore. The matter, the matter is in court. And we would have walked straight into his trap. We would have walked straight into his trap. Because he doesn't want to make any appointment. He prefers to run the elections just like that. Well, that will not happen. That will not happen. And that is why I chose today specifically only to speak on this matter. Please keep on reading the Mirror newspaper. Read the Citizen's Report. It is sent your email inbox or you can go and join it online. It is also posted on Facebook where you can go there and see all the articles that they are generating. Listen to Freedom Radio. Read the Mirror newspaper. Read what I write. Read our press releases. And you will be educated on this issue. And because remember, we can't be the few politicians on the ground all the time. We depend upon you, the people, to articulate the case and to argue the case and argue it well. But you can only argue a case if you understand the facts. And I have the facts here in the press release. So please get copies of the PVP press release, which was done yesterday, and take it from there and start to do what you think is necessary to highlight this issue about an attempt to rig the 2020 elections or whenever it happens. I will now go to the phones to take a few calls. Call here on the air. I'm not hearing you. Yes. I'm calling from the Bank in Bangkok, Essendon Village. Gatlinburg village. Gatlinburg village, yes. Um, 
listening to this program, Arlene, telling you this program, but um, if this president didn't want to call her petition, please, how he, um, how he will um, win the election, to clear the election. That is the other thing. They don't want to bring up our elections petition case. He doesn't want to even appoint judges. And that is why we may have to take to the streets to protest. But just beware and, and stay put. You will hear the activities that we are planning over the next few days. All right? Thank you. We have another call. Caller, you're on the air. Good night, Mr. Lala. Yes, where are you calling me from? Albion. Albion. Um, I don't know. I'm wondering if this president is, is, is safe. And the reason why I'm saying this, the reason he gave for rejecting a list is so hypocritical. Because in that list, there is a gentleman there that has a legal background, Mr. Christopher Ram. Yes, Ram is qualified to be a judge. So it is so hypocritical of him to say... Is that hypocritical? It's wrong. A person who has a legal background. But recall, I am pointing out that in 2001, Opposition leader Desmond Hyde submitted Green Jay's name. But the point is, he says that he wants to list with the people of uh, uh, Liga Bank. He list does have a, a person with Liga background in Christopher Ryan. And he ignored that person completely. That's the point. That's so, whatever argument he wants to advance, it will be clearly ridiculing exactly. to him. Yeah. Because he is absolutely wrong. Even if he reuse his argument, right? It doesn't hold water because there is a gentleman there that has a legal background. That's correct. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> yes, the caller has pointed out that Christopher Ram is qualified to be a judge. <laughs> caller, you're on the air. I would like to come, I am a bit confused. Where are you calling from? I'm going to say that uh, we got to get judge. Oh, is that over the election? So it's why he wasn't a judge for the election and shouldn't have gone first. Not only so is Wally, Rudy okay. Collins was not a judge. Edward Hopkinson was not a judge. Joe Singh was not a judge. So who gave up so is why he means? Desmond Hyde. Good. And now he... Desmond Hyde also gave Joe Singh name. Yes. And gave... David Ranger name on the same list. I know. Anyway, I want to ask a question. Why did the CCP didn't uh, put uh, the former to justice Ian Chan name on the list? We may have to put it on the next list. I believe Ian Chan does not want to go forward. Well, for, for, for the country, he should take that position. Well, it's a matter of personal choice. We can't force people, eh? I know, but, I know, but... But we will, we will, we will ask him again. All right, caller? And another important thing that I want to, another important point which I want to make is that this list was not concocted by Jack Dale sitting in a room by himself. The leader of the opposition held widespread consultations with a whole host of uh, organizations. He had days of consultation, several days, and people submitted the names. And that is how he came up with the six list. The six list is not Jack Dale's list. The six names, sorry. It's not Jack Dale's list. It's a list of names that came from civil society. So when the president is rejecting this list, he's rejecting the voice of civil society. And I thought that I have to make that point. Caller, you're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Nandalala. Where are you calling from? Calling for me in Amsterdam. Yeah, Amsterdam. Same field, actually. Um, now, concerning the, this president, man, to be honest, I've never voted. But these people are showing clearly that they cannot run a country. But why you never voted? I was never in the country before. Oh, maybe that's one of the reasons why they got him. Now, another point, though, what I want to say is that I see you guys have... Um, Mustafa and you also have Jafar Ali on this campaign thing again. Uh -huh. Seriously, on a, on a serious note, these two guys, they're not fit to be there. 
seriously because I follow this election. I feel all of this makes me lose everything, buddy. And another thing I want to say to is that if you know these guys are raising the, will be raising the election coming 2020, I feel it's a serious thing that they got to bring in whoever to just, just follow this election and let it go play this time. Well, okay, good. Thank you, brother. That is exactly the point that I'm making, but we alone can do it. We alone can do it. We will try, but we need the support of every single guy needs. And that is why we will start a work from Krabut Creek all the way to Charity, to Lethem, to Linden, Aichuni, Kakwani, all over this country to garner support. Call you on the air. Hi, where are you calling from? Blackbush. Blackbush, yes, how are you doing? Right, very well called. The caller has hit the nail on the head. They know that there is a strong likelihood, if not every likelihood, that they will lose the next election. So they are now preparing. They are now preparing to prevent that from happening by rigging elections. Well, as I said, we will not allow it to happen. Call your name. Where are you calling me from? I'm Rosal Kong. Where? Rosal Kong. Rosal, yes. Lower your TV up. We should shut the whole country down there now. Well, a lot of people have said that to me in Georgetown, that a lot of options are available. The business community is prepared to close their stores, you know. A lot of other, the minibus drivers have told me that they are prepared not to work that day, the taxi drivers. So we can close the country down? Close the country down, eh? Right? All right, well, we will discuss it at the level of the party. Thank you. This caller is saying close the country down. We may have to consider resorting to that because we will not allow this to happen. Caller, you're on the air. Hi, where are you calling me from? I'll be here. I don't know. I really don't know. Ram Jatan is a lawyer with 30 years experience. He's done now. He's done now. Basil Williams is a lawyer of 30 years experience. Yes. Trotman is a lawyer of 25 years experience. Yeah, but I'm only is a lawyer of about 20 years experience. You have Nagamoto. He is a lawyer of, I don't know, two year or three year experience. None of them can't understand this, but, but, Caller, you know when you read the thing, it is not even about law. It is in English language. It is what the word or means. That is the confusion, you know. I want to see. I mean, the whole objective of this government is to kill human people in the bottom. We can talk about that now. Well, we have to defend all the people of this country. So, right? Uh, uh, Alright, I, I have always spoken about the racism and the discrimination that is taking place. Well, you know what happened? Well, we know that. We know that. So, so what, about, what about if you start it tomorrow now? But, but, is that one person can light a fire? Exactly. Right? Not one set of people can light fires. Anyhow, all right, caller, thank you. Sir. Caller, you're on the air. Where are you calling from? Blackbush. Blackbush, yes. Yes, I'm going to revenge, you know. You think so? Yeah, revenge. This man, this chap will really go revenge. So, I don't know how you're going to do this, What work you do? Farming. You're a farmer. And I am sure, how far do you go to school? Not too far. Not too far. But I am sure you know what, what R means. That's right, sir. Even my, my granddad can tell you that. 
That's correct. If I tell you bring the shovel or the fork, it's only one of them. If I tell you bring the shovel and the fork, that's correct. But the president does not understand what the word or means. All right? Thank you. So once again, I appeal to you to get a copy of your mirror. Get a copy of the mirror newspapers. It is only a hundred dollars. And it is available in every single community. The mirror has a tremendous amount of information. Everything that I'm talking about is in the mirror. Caller, you're on the air. Hello, good night. Yes. I'm trying to go back to Toronto. Huh? Okay. Mm, yeah. my, my name is Jantil. I call Jantil and uh, I tell you go for anything. You can't get through no way. All right, call her. Okay. Make, make the point quick. Yeah. All this people in Barton, man, you can't walk. You can't drive. Can huh. can All right. A lot of people from our settlement vote for the coalition government. You know that, right? Yeah. So why don't you get them to fix it? What are you doing? I said no one. I will go. All right, caller. Thank you very much. This is where I I'll take one more call and then call, close the program off because we have run out of time. The operator is signaling to me. Caller, you have one minute. Where are you calling from? Oh, Paris. Paris, yes. Paris. Um, it seems like Mr. Granger knew the only word for O R is for only Rick. Only Rick. That's a good point. That's it. That, 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 that. Thank you. All right. This is where I have to say goodbye to you. We have had a very, very um, important program. I will ask the operator to show this program again. It has particular political value and it is in the best interest of every single Guyanese that we listen to this program and acquaint yourselves with the facts in relation to this issue because this here will determine, as I said, whether or not the next elections are going to be rigged. This is the foundation and I call upon every single organization in Barbies, the Muslim organization, the Sai Baba organization, the Hindu organization, the Christian organization, the whatever labor movement is there, is here in Barbies, the business community, I call upon every single one of you and every single Barbician to start the conversation now. Start the conversation now. Don't make me come back and say that I told you so. Let's start the conversation now. The foundation is being laid to rig the next election and we have to resist it with all of our might. Good evening and until I see you next week, please take care and have a great week. Thank you.